Hello Mallards, it is Monday and for actually a large part of the day today, Megan and I watched a new rom-com on Netflix called Choose Love and it is an interactive film. Uh, now Netflix has had several interactive films. There was a Kimmy Schmidt special, there is a Boss Baby, and there's also Bandersnatch which I've talked about previously when I was talking about Black Mirror. And each of those is unique in different ways. Uh, although I would say that most of those have been uh, choose your own adventure in the very classic, like you'll hit an early ending and then you can choose to go back to see if you can get further because of death, destruction, whatever it may be, a failed plan. Meanwhile, this one, Choose Love is your classic rom-com where Cammy is trying to decide between her current boyfriend, Paul, her first love high school crush who's suddenly back in her life, Jack, and the very talented British musician Rex who just rolled into her life at a time when she wants to be a music producer and has also thought about singing. And they're all trying to romance her. It's a very Mary Sue sort of situation. Uh, and so you, as the audience member, get to make different decisions about what she tells the guys, who she chooses to spend time with, and then it wraps up in a myriad of different ways. And we tried a lot of them. All of them? No, definitely not. No way. Because sometimes when we opened new ones, then there were new options that we hadn't seen before when we went different directions. And so I think that there is a potentially, not infinite, but a much larger amount of options than I have seen so far. Does it make me want to keep trying? Yes, absolutely. Have you met me? I am the person who bookmarks, like who tabs every ending in a choose your own adventure book and then just reads the book over and over and pulls off the tabs as I get to those endings until I've somehow reached every single ending. Uh, it is my goal. Now I don't tab every scene. So there's the potential that there are scenes in a choose your own adventure book that I've never experienced because I've never gotten there. But I do like to read until I've read every ending. And yes, I am aware that that is slightly psychotic behavior. I own this about myself. So I did this film a few times. First to just pick each guy at the end, there are a few different options to end up with each guy, which is interesting. But if you're playing through for the first time, so like as you play through, when you hit the ending, you have the option to like go back to this dream that she has where she sees all three guys and you're making a choice. And then also usually one other option in your storyline. And so after our first playthrough where we picked Jack, and yes, I did say playthrough instead of watch. I don't know. It's a mixture. It's almost game-like, but it is still very clearly a film. I don't know. It's a mixed media thing and it's something I'm really into. I really, really like that this exists and I think it's really fun. But once we got our ending with Jack, I clicked to backtrack to choose one of the other guys and then click to backtrack to choose one of the other guys and then it was really interesting because after we made our third choice instead of the kind of like the the way the ending had gone the other two times is it like closed in in a circle to something and then eventually faded out and let you choose the two things you could go back to or like go back to the credits uh but instead we got this special little ending where there's a dance party with all four of the main characters. Uh, and it was like, you picked all of the different endings. So you get this special celebration. And I think that only works if you do not restart the whole thing while you're going, because you also have the option to like restart, which resets all of your answers and like puts you back to zero. And then I did that a couple of times just to see what would happen if I made different choices earlier in the game and decided on different things and went in different directions. And it did surprisingly 
blossom more than I had anticipated. Like after going through it the first time and then going back like just a little ways to get those other two endings, I was like, okay, so maybe there's only like two versions of this scene. And there are some scenes that are wildly consistent throughout each watch, but there are some scenes that are very different based on choices you made earlier. And then there are some scenes where there's just like a little bit of difference based on choices you made earlier. Uh, and I think it's really fun to see those play out. And I don't think it's possible to watch it all unless somebody can like let me know a catalog of scenes so that I could be like, ah, oh, yes, I have seen that scene or I haven't seen this scene. I would also be really fascinated to see the script of this show. Like, I don't know if that's something that is being shared, uh, but I should look up the screenwriters and just be like, hey, I, I just would like to know you don't even have to show me this specific script, but I'd really like to know how you dive into writing something like this, because obviously it tracks a lot with the way that I create immersive theater, but a lot of our immersive theater is also immersive and interactive. So I have all these different avenues and paths based on choice, but they're a lot more, I'm gonna say ooey gooey, like a lot more wibbly wobbly timey wimey because we improvise and adapt versus the video format. And I have written a choose your own adventure video for kids. We did a Stardust Kingdom adventure. I will link it down there if you wanna try it out for yourselves. And I know the amount that it took just to write that. And that is a pretty linear tree. It's like make a choice and from that, make these choices, but like these choices will meet up and continue on this path. And then you can make these choices, but then when you go out here, these choices also come back to this path and these choices come to this path. And like it sort of delineates down to essentially like two options aside from like some options that'll send you all the way back to the beginning. But like I tried to make it go more like this than like this. And this one, I feel like sort of does come kind of come back but it it just got deeper the more that I dug rather than actually getting narrower which is what I'd sort of anticipated happening like I thought that I was gonna be like oh okay if I make this choice it gives me this extra scene but then the storyline carries on the way that it had before whereas in fact even though the storyline does carry on there are little subtle changes in this scene that reflect that choice that I made. And I think that's really impressive uh, and requires a lot. So I'd love to see the screenplay and I really enjoyed playing through that. The acting in this is cheesy, but it's meant to be like it is a cheesy rom-com and they lean hard into that in every turn. And I'm also very impressed by the performers because you are potentially doing a scene like repeatedly, but slightly altered and you need to build completely different emotions. So I also wonder from a directorial standpoint and shooting, like it makes the most sense to shoot all of the scenes that happen in a location at the same time, right? And so as an actor, wrapping your head around me standing in this exact same spot, delivering almost identical dialogue, but my story up until this point is actually completely different if I'm delivering this dialogue is really interesting. So like playing a Jack who, I'm just gonna give you a scene, there are a lot of spoilers in here. So playing Jack, who is the high school love, in this scene where you're at a protest in Vegas where her was current, went on a break, boyfriend shows up, the scene is almost identical as far as dialogue goes, but you could be in this scene where Jack is aware of who Paul is and Paul is aware of who Jack is, or you could be in this scene where neither of them know who each other are. Maybe, I haven't figured out if you can actually make Paul not know, but you might be able to. Or like you could be in this scene where like, Paul knows, but then Jack has no idea that Paul even exists. And those are not big differences in the grand scheme 
of the storyline, but they are kind of big differences for how a person would react in the moment. And so the idea of shooting all of those scenes back to back to back is also really interesting. And so like, how do you let them know where they're at in that point in time? How did they read the script? Like if you sat down and did a table read, are you reading one set of choices and then another set of choices and then another set of choices? Or are you reading all of the first scenes and then all of the, you know, like before, like everything leading up to, I don't know, pick a moment. Like there are, there are some moments where the scenes like really do come back together. So like every scene leading up to leaving the school and you read all of the options. And then every scene leading up to uh, her like deciding to ask for a raise and or quit her job like before that and you read all of the options and then you know and how does it work from that sort of standpoint I'm also interested in mostly I think playing through this film really opened up a wider concept for me about the creation of it which was really cool and so it really got my brain churning about that and now I just want to know like I want a behind the scenes of this so much. I really, really want to know what it was like from the aspect of everyone involved in the project. How did the writers write it? How did the director choose to direct it? Uh, how did the actors figure out what was going on and how to perform all of these slightly different, slightly different staging, but emotionally very different scenes? And how's it going editing? Like I get the feeling that in Netflix itself, because of how I can fast forward and rewind and sort of like how things are set, that it's really like tiny little videos that are somehow hooked together. And that's like a technological thing. So I wonder in editing, like how did they edit things together to make that work? I don't know. It's just an incredible undertaking. And as far as your classic rom-com goes, it's fun. Like it's a blast. You get to make all those decisions that sometimes you wish you could make when you're watching rom-coms and just go for it. If you decide you want to lie to everybody, lie to everybody. You want to tell everybody the truth, do that. You want to just take a hard left turn and try to run off to San Francisco with the musician, you can try that. And it's really fun and it's fun to see the different dynamics and the different developments. One thing that I really enjoyed playing through it a bunch is that Rex, who is the musician, if you go with either of the other guys, Rex sort of like becomes a friend still and you could still have her career and have a romance with somebody else, which I thought was a nice touch that she didn't have to give up on music if she chose not to romantically pursue Rex. And that's kind of nice. But he very much becomes a friend if you sort of drive down these other avenues, which I thought was really fun versus the other two guys are very much more like classically opposed. So you are choosing one or the other and you're breaking the other's heart. It's just interesting. Like it's fun to see how those dynamics play out and the different things that you could do. And there are also just wild options. Like we ended up with Paul in two very different ways. I'm pretty sure that like there are just ways to end up with everybody in a few different ways. And so it's fun to see what you could do. And do I think I'm done playing my way through it? For today I am, but maybe not forever. So if you've ever undertaken something like this, let me know in the comments. Or if you've seen it, I'd love to hear from you what endings you got, or not even endings, what scenes or like what surprised you the most? What were you enjoying about it as you went along? Uh, anything that shocked you? And I am going to go lie down in bed where I will probably honestly just keep thinking about how they developed this film because I really want to know and I will see you tomorrow.